So I've got to put these engine mounts on the chassis for the LSA. Now my tub has some cancerous activity on the body mounts. That one's got cancer there and I pulled that body mount off. And these two rear body mounts on the bottom of the tub are missing completely. So I either need to do a fair whack of body work to get those mounts done so I can mount the tub on the chassis or I can go out and buy another tub and use the bits off of it. I chose option B. A couple of good things about this particular tub. The windscreen surround is excellent. Mine's pretty crappy. And the body braces where the body mounts go on this one are excellent. And down here, they're not missing like on mine. So I'm gonna unload this tub, drop him down on the ground, and she's gonna get carved up and she's gonna be used to bring my tub back to life. Probably shouldn't be trying to unload this alone, but I'm alone at the moment. So I got a little bit of panel beating to get this tub just right. Oh, hang on. This is the tub I'm working on, not the other one. So I've got the old banger there, which actually had body mounts that I'll chop out to allow me to mount them into my tub. And so first of all, get body mounts sorted out on this tub, get the tub mounted on the chassis to allow me to fit up the motor mounts for the LSA. Now, the first thing I've got to do is separate this old crusty floor from this body mount. The mount itself has got a couple of pinholes in it that I'm going to have to repair. But first things first, get rid of the old crusty floor. And it's spot welded in a number of places to that mount. Just slowly peel it back to find where those spot welds are located. I got all the crusty metal taken off this brace. I put it in the cabinet and blasted it. Now I've got some rust here and on the shoulder and on this flat. So that's the next step to cut these bits of cancer out and weld those up with some fresh metal. But other than that, she's in pretty good nick. So there's the repairs. I've got to put one piece here and then a second piece there. Too difficult to fabricate a compound curve on that thing, for me anyway. And I've got to weld that hole up as well. And I just went over to the cab and cut a junk of donor steel out of there. So I'll clean that up and cut my bits out. Get a marker and trace my two bits of steel out. There we go. We'll chop them out. So I've got to fill that hole first before I can work on the other side. And I've got myself a small piece cut out. So I'm just going to tack weld this bit of wire to that to allow me to hold it in that hole and weld it in fully. Alrighty, I've got my little holder. Break the holder off. Now I'll go ahead and weld that fully in. And you can tell why I had to do that one first because if I filled that in, it'd get in the road. All right, got the piece all welded up, all dressed up. Now I'll hit it with some paint because there'll be parts of this piece that I will not be able to get to once it's in the car. So I'll paint it and then I'll grind off the areas where I've got to spot weld it and we'll install it in the car. Well, after half a day of panel beating on these guys, I finally got them cleaned up and fully repaired. Now they will install right there on the tub. But before I can do that, I'm going to have to do some repairs there. That piece there is an extra thick piece that basically sandwiched the floor. 
and that's probably an additional support so that you didn't actually pull the bolt through when you were tightening that. So I've got some plate of similar thickness, measured that out, and I'll cut those squares out to sandwich in between there. Now I'm gonna drill a hole in the center for where the mount goes, and I'm sure everybody knows this, but it's worth the saying, just in case, but to find the center of a rectangular or a square piece, just draw an X on it. And where X marks the spot, that's the dead center of your pit. X marks the spot. There we go. That's the diameter we're after. So here's the way it goes. We've got our mount, and then we've got the floor. And then we've got this plate, which welds to the bottom of the floor. So basically the floor is sandwiched in between that body mount and this plate. So now it's time to go cut out a piece of steel, patch the holes in my floor. So those are the holes in my floor. One there and one there. And I gotta find a decent piece of steel on this tub to cut out to patch those holes. And I'm thinking somewhere on this back wall looks pretty solid. Got my money out of that wheel. Okay, I got my two patch panels cut out. Here's one of them, and that pops in there. And now what I've got to do is trim this off so that that patch panel can butt weld in there. And I'll show you a little trick how I've learned to do that. And it has to do with the angle of your cut. So let me discuss a little bit of theory before we go into practice. Let's say you've got two pieces of metal overlapping like that and you want to butt weld them and you cut it along that line there of the overlap. That would leave you with a gap like that, which is the width of the disc. That's a one millimeter disc. And then you've got to go along and you've got to fill that in with your MIG. No big deal, it's possible. But better way to handle that, so let's say you've got that overlap again. You run that disc along at an angle, at a 45 degree angle, on the top of this piece and through that second piece. And when you do that, these two pieces will actually lay flush against one another with barely any gap in between them because it's a 45, it's a chamfer. So that's the theory behind it. I'll show you that in practice on the panel itself. And I use this on any sort of patch paneling I can get in with my cutoff wheel on a 45 degree angle. There's my hole. Here's my patch panel. Now the first thing I've got to do is clean the panel up so that I can weld it on. So that marking shows me where I've got to grind to get clean metal for my welds to stick and then of course I'll clean this panel up as well. Now I got my patch panel and my floor all cleaned up and I'm just going to tack this in place now. You can see that gap there now and if you push that panel in those two sides butt up just perfectly. So I've got two sides cut. This third, third side is yet to go. You can see when I push that panel in now, there's virtually no gap there. Certainly not a one millimeter wide gap, the width of your disc itself. So before I cut this third side, I'm gonna tack these back in place so that this panel doesn't shift when I cut that last tack weld out of there. And that panel has laid down there, beautiful and flush. So I'll cut that third side, tack weld that back in place, and that side is done. Then that'll ultimately weld there. I'm not actually gonna weld this mount in place until I get the tub on the chassis so I can make sure that the tub is completely square. Once I tack weld that in place, I'll drill this hole through this floor and then cut that all back out, pop this plate on the underside, and plug weld that plate on the underside. So it's a little bit of a complex affair, but just follow along with me and you'll get it. Now I've got my two patch panels welded in on the floor, which is great. That will weld approximately there, but before I weld that in place, I will set the cab back on the chassis and get that lined up perfectly. So that concludes our bottom two pieces. Now I've got to go up to the front of the tub, fix some rust in the floor, 
So cut that out and replace it. And it pops in place something like that. And the rubber mounts there onto the chassis. On this side, my mount is pretty much cactus. So I'm gonna have to cut that out of there completely. No doubt repair some holes in the floor. And this mount on my donor tub is not in too bad a shape by the looks of it. So I'll have to chop that out of it. Got him. All right, I got that body brace all blasted in the blast cabinet. A few holes in it that I've filled up. So that's ready for a little bit of paint. And I can now drill this guy out. I've gone through and marked where I think the spot welds are located on this thing. And I've got myself a spot weld drill, which has this little pointy bit that goes in the middle of the spot weld. All right, got my spot welds drilled out. There we have it. Look at how dead that is. And a nice big asshole in the floor. Well, as is typical with these types of projects, you get more than you bargain for. That's where our body brace was. I'm going to have to cut that out and repair that hole in the floor. While I'm at it, I think I'll cut this one out as well, just because it'll be a bit easier to get to without the brace in the road. There's a small bracket here that welds onto this brace, and this panel is full of holes as well. So I'm going to have to actually replace this panel. Piece by piece, we got to work at it. First, I'll fabricate this little L bracket. Then I'm going to cut this out and replace that. Then I'll cut this out, replace that. And lastly, that one, before we can actually fit our brace on and weld it in place. At the moment, I'm just fabricating bits and pieces. There's that little C bracket that pops in there. That one's all fabricated. I got holes drilled in it for the plug welds. So I think the next thing I'll do is chop this piece of the panel out, get a piece to fit in there, and then lastly cut this bit of floor out. I'll be able to demonstrate this patch panel method I use a little bit better with this piece. So this is all rotted out, full of cancer. I got myself a piece of good steel here. I'm simply marking this so that I know where to clean the epoxy primer off to be able to weld that in place. Okay, there's our patch panel. Now I'll weld that in place. Okay, I got my patch panel welded in place. Now I'm going to cut this on a 45 degree angle. Now my original plan was, as I cut these spot welds out, just go back around and re-weld them while this panel is nice and flush. However, like a lot of plans on these things, they change. And what's changed on mine was, first of all, I picked out that little bracket that goes in there. And there's mine my replacement bracket that will weld in there. But I realized when I cut this out that it's probably actually going to be easier to patch this floor while this piece is missing. So what that means is I'll trim this piece out of the floor here and I'll weld a patch panel in here before I weld that patch panel on there before I weld that one there. And in fact, I might even cut that one out and repair that one while this body brace isn't here as well because it could get in the way of the MIG a little bit. But that's it, just evolving plans as I sort of roll along. All right, I got my first patch panel all cut. That's ready to be welded in now, which I'll do next. And I got a small piece to fill here. Then I can go ahead and put this side piece on. There's one bit of advice that I can give you when welding these patch panels in, and that's patience. You want to just spot it along and let it cool between those spots because as soon as you introduce any amount of heat, this stuff just warps like crazy. And I know that from personal experience. Often what I'll do is make two patch panels and I'll weld one, weld the other, weld one, weld the other to allow a little bit of cooling to happen between them. In fact, that's probably what I'll do here. But first things first, I'll tack this little sucker in place. All right, 
that's tacked in place. Now I think I'll chop that sucker out and make a patch panel for that. Got that crusty, nasty old patch panel cut out from years gone by. Welded in mine, which I've got out of the donor floor. It's got the proper embossing on it and everything. So now I'll fully weld these two panels in. Got my two patch panels welded in and dressed up. Now I'll just hit it with a light dusting of some cold gal paint, just so it doesn't flash rust on me. And we are ready now to put this guy in. That's all welded in and dressed up now. And that is pretty flat, which I'm happy with. Now we come back over here, pop that panel in place, which is our body mount. Distant from here to the middle of the hole, it's 105 mil, which I am on, spot on. So this is ready now to be spot welded in place. I've drilled a bunch of holes along here to do my plug welds. All right, got my brace all welded in. The last piece of the puzzle on this side is that little C bracket pops in there, spot welds against back here, and the bolt runs through. So once this is done, this side's finished. Hallelujah. Okay, that's all done. There's the crusty old one. Looks like Swiss cheese. And there's our replacement. A little bit more work than what I thought it was, which is typical for these things. As soon as you start sort of peeling the onion, you get through to the different layers and all those layers have little surprises. Anyway, that side's done. We'll move over to the other side and it'll be pretty much a rinse and repeat of this one. Now I'm over on the left-hand side of the car and this is gonna take some slicing and dicing as well, I think. Got a fair whack of cancer there. This top of the C bracket is all rotted out. And this piece of the floor needs to go as well. And once those are replaced, then I can weld that body brace in. Okay, let's get to cutting. I'll start with that bit there. I got an old piece of floor here, which has got that divot in it, which is fantastic. So I'll cut that out for starters anyway, and use that emboss. Our patch panel all cleaned up. Unfortunately, there's a hole in my patch panel, so I gotta patch the patch before I can put the patch in. So I got my patch patched. Now it's time to cut a hole in the floor, put my patch in. So I got a little bit of double skin action happening here, so I can only cut this top bit because I don't want to cut through the, I guess it's a bit of a fold on the top side of the floor, so I only want to just cut through this skin here. So to do that, I'll use a bit smaller tool and a little bit finer to allow me to get in there. All right, I've cut that panel out, and that's the sort of crustiness that's sort of lurking in between these panels, and that's why it eventually rots through. I've got my replacement panel, which I'll just need to trim up a little bit, and she'll weld straight in there. That panel's all trimmed up now, so I'll weld her in place. All right, I got my patch panel welded in. Not completely happy with that one, actually. It laid in there okay. It's just difficult to grind the welds in these corners, I guess. And I'm a bit of a neat freak. So I'll hit it with a bit of this cold gal paint so it doesn't flash rust. And that is going to be it for today, I'm afraid. We're running out of daylight. So I've still got to cut that piece out. And i got to cut and repair that little C-channel thing. I don't know how long this episode's going to last. 20, 30 minutes maybe. But at the end of this, I'll probably have about a week's worth of work in this thing. So remember earlier in the episode, I was talking about patience with body work, especially when you're letting these things cool. I guess you probably got to apply patience to body work full stop. It's very time consuming and visibly, you don't get the leaps and bounds in progress that you'd hope to. Okay, that patch is done. Now I'll chop this little piece out here and replace that. And that's two layers. One's this little C-shaped piece, and then the second one is the fold on this outside panel. Okay, I'll cut myself two small pieces. Well, the first one in for the C-channel repair, and the second one for this top repair.
that patch is all done. Again, we'll hit it with a little bit of cold gal. Believe it or not, I think our time has come. That brace is ready to be welded in. I'll drill some holes along here so I can plug weld it. Clean off the paint so the weld will stick and send her home. All right, this has been a long time coming. I don't believe we're ready for plug welding time. 105. There we go. That mount is all finished. Welded in, hit with some cold gal paint. This mount, completely finished. Welded in, cold gal paint. These two, as you saw earlier in the vid, are all cleaned up and ready to install. What I'll do next is lift the tub onto the chassis so that I can line up the holes for those back two mounts and then tack weld them in and drill the hole through the floor. <sighs> Been a week's worth of work so far and still going. This day's been a long time coming. Time to lift the cab onto the chassis. First things first, I'll pop these brand new body mounts. Beautiful foo foo valve breaking time now. I wonder whether we um, roll her forward. It's not that heavy. You guys broke the back. You guys grab that. And Matt, you might grab the back. I'll do that. Yep. Lovely. Thank you, boys. Done. Easy. Excellent. <laughs> you can see on the back of the tub, there's a series of vice grips. While I had the tub back on the chassis, I fitted those body mounts and held them in place with those vice grips. The boys are now helping me pull the tub off so that I can weld those in place properly. Thank you, gentlemen. That's freaking awesome. I've located these mounts exactly where they need to be. First things first, drill a couple of small little pilot holes so that that locates properly and I know where to put it back when I take these clamps off. All right, two small holes there drilled in that one to locate it. I'll do that on the other side. Now we can drill a big hole. Okay, I can pull these clamps off now. Now my next step is I've got to cut that patch panel out. I've only got a few tack welds there. And weld that plate on the back side of this. And that is just an extra reinforcing because your bolt runs up through there. So consider, consider that almost like a giant washer, I guess. Chopped out those spot welds. And this panel, plug welds onto the back of that. And then that welds back in place. And then that welds over top of it. So what that means is when you put your bolt through, your body bolt through, it's actually got quite a large surface area of thick metal to prevent it from pulling through. Okay, that little puppy is plug welded in place. I'll grind those welds back so they're nice and flush, hit it with a bit of zinc coating, and I can weld that plate fully in place. All right, that big plate is plug welded on the back side here. Now it's time for me to butt weld in this patch panel. The patch panel is now fully welded in. That's nice and solid. Take my angle grinder now and dress up all of these welds before we weld the body mount on. That weld's all dressed up. I'll put some wax and grease remover over it and I'll hit it with this weld through primer. Now I'll let that go off and then I'll be able to weld this brace in place. This is ready to be plug welded in place. So I just need to line up my holes that I drilled previously. And hit it with the gun. All right, that's looking good. Time to send her home. Look 
looking real good. Well, that took a crap load of time, but we're finished. So I'll hit it with a little bit of cold gal paint and call it quits. Well, those cab mounts were a bucket load of work. But you know what? I enjoyed doing it. The next step is the cab goes back on the chassis, sitting on its mounts, so I can begin to locate the brackets for the LSA and the six-speed auto. That is going to happen in our next episode. Thanks for watching, everybody. Appreciate it very, very much. Keep the shiny side up. We'll see you next time. Bye now.